This is Joan from Typewriter Rents. Today we are going to be doing our for sale review of a 1964 Olympia SF. So I've had this machine for a couple years. If you've ever had an Olympia SF, you know that they are little tanks. Um, we had this thing completely apart, cleaned, tuned, and adjusted. And when you have the body panels off, you can see the frame inside is just solid. I mean, the, these things are heavy for their size. They're just built so well. And the Olympia SFs have really responsive, snappy keys. We'll show you that when we do the type test. But we're gonna let this one go. It's in really good shape. I'm gonna grab the camera from Jonah for a minute. I'll give you a quick tour here. It does not have a dedicated one key, so you gotta use a lowercase l, but it does have an exclamation mark. You got the four dots there, that's your margin release key. Sometimes um, it has a, I think an MR on some models. This one has the four dots. It is a carriage shift, so it's uh, about medium, I would say medium heft for, a, for an ultra portable. And it's kind of cool, I like the, the color scheme on this. It has kind of dark gray, slate gray on the sides, cream color on the top and front and bottom and keys. Then it has these turquoise uh, keys, turquoise shift keys and then turquoise platinum knobs. So it has, has kind of a cool design. Paint on this is in excellent shape except for a little scuff right here on the ribbon cover. And if you can see it, a few scuffs here on the side. When you put this in the case, this has to be pushed down the side handle. And so over the years, apparently it has bumped up against the ribbon cover. So I have a little foam doodad that I put on there to keep this from getting further scratched. But other than those two little scuffs, it's really in good shape. The, the one thing that this does not have, and I've looked for a couple years, is there's supposed to be a clear uh, ruler guide on the back here. And that was missing. I've tried for a couple years to find it and I just have not had any success. So it's really more um, cosmetic than functional because you do have a paper scale here on the paper bale. So when you're moving the margins, which are these little push and slide right here, you can push and slide and you see the red pointer moving. So instead of having the, the ruler guide with the numbers, you just have to line it up with the, the scale on the paper bale. So over here on this side, it has a single carriage release lever on the right. Oh, I'm sorry, carriage release lever right here. Not hard to do one-handed. Woo! There we go. You can hear the bell. It has a pretty solid paper bale with paper bale rollers that are in good shape. It has a little eraser table there that if you wanted to, you can erase, leave the paper flat and erase on that. Hopefully you won't, because we don't want to get eraser shavings in our typewriter. Over on this side, we have, um, this is the paper release lever right there. So if you put the paper in and it's crooked, just lift it up, scooch the paper around, and then flip it back. And then this little lever right here is for the pop-up paper support. So down and then just pull it forward and up it comes and we'll come around to this side over here you can see the paint on the back is in excellent shape made in western germany over to this side here again this handle when you're ready to put it in the case just pushes down and then there's a little notch ball there that keeps it up when you're ready to type. Up on top here, you have the line space lever, which is, I think, one, one and a half, and two. And then the little red dot right there is the release position. So if you put it on the dot, then when you turn the platen, there's no clicks. So that's your fine line adjustment for getting wherever you need to on a form. And I think that about covers it for the outside of the machine. I'm gonna let Jonah Take the camera and I'll pull off the ribbon cover. It just pops straight up. 
these little studs here, one on each side, go down into these rubber grommets. Thankfully, these are still nice and soft. These are nice and soft. The rubber um, bumpers here, there's two on the side and, and two over here. Those are nice and soft. So everything's been, I think, kept in a climate controlled environment. Also the feet on the bottom, I'll tilt it up, uh, are nice and soft and squishy. So they're a little dark just from sitting on a black surface, but the feet are nice and soft. You can see the paint is in excellent shape. Did have this thing completely apart for cleaning and tuning and adjusting. I replaced their, their the original um, soundproofing material is this foam that was kind of in the shape of the side panel. You can't see it, it's on the inside. And that's just a common issue on Olympias from this age that uh, soundproofing material just turns to dust when you push it, it just pulverizes. So I took that out and replaced it with new felt on this side and inside over here. You can, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see if you look in there, you'll see the gray felt. So just trust me, it's there. You do have a tension adjustment lever right here. So a heavy or light touch. And then inside here, we've already put a black and red ribbon on it. This does not require eyelets. The Olympia SFs, like the other SM models, the ribbon reverse mechanism is based on the angle of the ribbon from here to this little post and around. So you do not need eyelets, just need a black and red ribbon or whatever color you want. And that's it for under the hood. We'll give this to Jonah and put the ribbon cover back on. And it does have a clear card guide right there. So that helps keep uh, paper flush to the platen. Okay, put that back on. There we go. And we'll take a look at the case next. All right, I forgot to show the carriage lock. This little lever right there, pull it forward. And then that, that's your uh, carriage lock for when you're ready to put it in the case. And when you're ready to type, just flip it back. Here is the case. And as you can see, it's in excellent shape. So, it's in really good shape. No tears up here. The zipper doesn't have any tears. That's one of the weak spots on this case is that a lot of times the fabric has ripped on these machines. This one has not, so that's definitely a plus. And on the inside, you can see here, it's in really good shape as well. If I turn it over here, you can see where the black is starting to come up on this corner flap. Other than that, the rest of the case is in really good shape and the zipper works just fine. So this machine doesn't have any type of mechanism to latch it in place. It's just the weight of the machine sitting down there and then this comes over on top. It has kind of nice gold trim pieces here on the handle. So that's a look at the case. And now for the type test. So this uh, Olympia has a nice soft platen. You can stick your thumbnail in it and feel it has a lot of give. So probably don't need two pieces of paper, but I do it anyway, just as a matter of habit. I love on the little Olympia is the clicking sound on these, nice and crisp. Okay, we'll do a couple lines on black. There's the line lock. So if you want to go to the margin, you just do the margin release key.
Olympia SFs have really bouncy, kind of taut or tight keys. It's just a different feel than a, say, a Skyrider. I really like it. It's definitely a, a personal preference on how you like the keys on ultra portables. But these have a really nice bouncy touch. We'll do a couple lines on red now. super fast does not skip a bunch uh, which is nice and Olympias are really second to none when it comes to print quality if you ignore the typos you can see the print quality is excellent especially for a little machine like this so really good typer very portable again it is just seems heavier than uh, some other port ultra portables from the same era Probably because of the frame. When you get the body off and you look, it's just a solid metal frame underneath. So I think that's a good thing. Just a very solid, dependable, super snappy machine, and the results speak for themselves. One final note it's kind of a basic ultra portable, uh, meaning that it does not have a tabulator. So you can space over for your new paragraphs, but no tabulator on this machine. If you are interested in buying this typewriter, you can contact us directly or we'll put a link to the eBay sale in the comments below. Thank you for joining us in Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.